How to Play Innovation Echoes of the Past Echoes of the Past was the first expansion to the popular card game Innovation. Because it's an expansion, Echoes of the Past requires that you already own the base game of Innovation in order to play it. Echoes of the Past adds a bit of additional complexity to the game, so it's highly recommended that you become very familiar with the base game before delving into this expansion. If you haven't already viewed my How to Play Innovation video, I recommend you do that first, then play the game for a couple weeks, and then return here when you're ready to move on to Echoes of the Past. The Echoes of the Past expansion deck is a blue colored deck of 105 cards broken up into ages 1 through 10 just like the base game. In contrast to what the instructions tell you to do, I recommend instead that you lay out the age decks side by side in this manner. Whereas the base game of innovation tended to have cards that represented discoveries over time, the Echoes of the Past cards focus more on inventions. Examples of Echo cards include Dice in Age 1, Magnifying Glass in Age 3, Piano in Age 5, Elevator Age 7, Helicopter Age 9, and GPS from Age 10. Playing Innovation with the Echoes of the Past expansion works similarly to the base game with some key exceptions which I'll describe now. When you need to draw a card from a particular age, you have to determine whether you should draw from the brown base game deck or the blue Echoes deck. Furthermore, you also need to know when to advance to the next higher age with available cards. While the following procedure may seem confusing at first, you'll get the hang of it quickly once you've played a couple times. If there are cards available in the brown base deck for the age from which you need to draw, you draw from the brown base deck if you already have at least one blue Echoes card in your hand, or if you have no cards in your hand. If instead you have at least one brown base game card in your hand and no blue Echoes cards in your hand, you draw from the blue Echoes deck. Let's say the game is about to start and you're drawing your first two cards to form your initial hand. Since you have no cards in your hand to begin with, your first draw comes from the brown Age 1 deck. Now you need a second card. Since you have at least one card in your hand, and none of those cards in your hand is a blue Echoes card, your second card comes from the blue Age 1 Echoes deck. If you initially melded your brown card, leaving the blue Echoes card in your hand, your next draw will come from the brown deck. In fact, all subsequent draws will come from the brown deck, as long as you're holding on to that one blue Echoes card in your hand. Once that Echoes card leaves your hand, your next draw will come from the blue Echoes deck, assuming you still have at least one brown base game card in your hand. An age deck is considered empty when its brown base deck is empty. If you need to draw an age one card from the Echoes deck, but the Age 1 base deck is empty, you instead draw an Echoes card from the next higher age with available brown cards. If, on the other hand, you need to draw an Age 1 card from the Blue Echoes deck, but the Blue Echoes deck for Age 1 is empty, and brown Age 1 cards are still available, you would draw an Age 1 card from the brown base deck. The dogmas on some cards, such as Comb from Echoes of the Past Age 1, or Physics from the base game of Innovation Age 5, instruct you to draw multiple cards. In this case, you draw as if you were drawing for your hand. Thus, if you're executing Comb's dogma and you have no cards in your hand, you would draw 
brown, blue, brown, brown. If you were executing Combs Dogma and you had one or more brown cards in your hand, but no blue cards, you would draw blue, brown, brown, brown. If you're executing Combs Dogma and you have one or more blue cards in your hand, you would draw brown, 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 brown. The dogmas on some cards, such as Clothing from Innovation Base Game Age 1, instruct you to draw and score, or draw and meld, or draw and tuck multiple cards. You should consider these to be actions that are independent of each draw. In other words, if you're activating Clothing's Dogma and you're permitted to draw and score three cards, you draw and score one card, then you draw and score a second card, and finally you draw and score the third card. Thus, if you had no cards in your hand to begin with, you would draw and score three brown cards. However, if you had one brown card in your hand to begin with and no blue cards, you would draw and score three blue cards. When you return a card, you always return it to the bottom of the deck from which it came. You should never have one deck containing cards with different colored backs or from different ages. The Echoes of the Past playing mat, used to hold the cards you score and the cards you achieve, now has an additional area for cards that you foreshadow, called the Forecast. Many dogmas will instruct you to draw and foreshadow a card, in which case the card is stored in this Forecast area, face down. You can examine your Forecast cards at any time, but your opponents will only know the number of cards in your forecast, whether they're base game cards or echo cards, and what age they're from. Any time you perform a meld action, you may meld one card from your forecast of the same age or an earlier age. If you do, you may also perform the dogma effects on that card, following the normal rules for demanding and sharing. Melding a card from your forecast is entirely optional, and if you do elect to meld a card from your forecast, executing its dogma effects is also optional. In any event, the meld from your forecast and the playing of the dogma effects are all counted as being part of your original meld action. So if you have at least two cards in your hand, and at least two cards in your forecast, it's entirely possible that your two-action turn could consist of four melds and two dogma actions. It's important to note that you can only meld a card from your forecast when you perform the meld action. Melding a card as part of a dogma effect, for instance, does not permit you to meld a card from your forecast. Let's consider an example. Here, the player had previously foreshadowed Paper from age 3 and Chintz from age 4. He decides to meld Deodorant, age 3, from his hand. Doing so permits him to immediately meld Paper from his forecast, and then, if he so desires, execute Paper's dogma effects, sharing them with any opponent who has two or more light bulb icons showing on their board. Note that he is not permitted at this time to meld chintz because its age is a higher age than deodorants. Next, the player elects to meld societies, age 5, from his hand. He can then immediately meld chintz from his forecast and then, if he wishes, execute chintz's dogma effects sharing them with any opponent who has ten or more crowns on their board. Similarly, if the player melded a card from his forecast containing an I Demand Dogma, he could optionally execute that demand of any opponents with fewer of the featured icon displayed on their board. Some cards contain mini dogma actions called Echo Effects in place of an icon on their card face. 
When you're executing the dogma effects of one of your top cards, you first execute all the visible echo effects in that stack in order from bottom to top. If you would normally have to share the dogma effects with an opponent, you'll have to share the echo effects with that opponent as well. Like dogma effects, echo effects are mandatory unless they're preceded with the words, you may. Note that if you're executing the dogma effect of a top card from a stack that is not splayed, at most you'll be able to execute one echo effect prior to that dogma. Let's look at an example. Say you wanted to activate Almanac's dogma effect, and your opponent is showing the same number of leaf icons on their board as you're showing on your board. In that case, your opponent would execute the echo effect, draw and tuck a 1. Then you would do so. Next, your opponent executes the echo effect, draw and foreshadow a 4, followed by you. Finally, your opponent has the option of executing Almanac's You May Dogma effect. Afterwards, you can elect to execute Almanac's Dogma effect as well. And because your opponent shared at least one effect, in this case the two echo effects, and possibly the dogma, you get to draw a free card as a bonus. Some cards contain brown bonus numbers in place of an icon on their card face. Brown bonus numbers add to your score as long as the bonus numbers remain visible on your board you only receive the full value of the largest bonus number visible on your board. All other bonus values count as one, regardless of their value. In this example, you would add four plus one plus one plus one, or seven points, to your existing score of 13, giving you a total score of 20. If you subsequently splayed this stack right instead of left, your score would then equal 4 plus 1 plus 1, or 6 points, plus the 13 from your score pile, for a total of 19. Echoes of the Past comes with an additional set of 5 special achievements. When you're playing a game of Echoes of the Past, you are eligible to earn any of these 10 special achievements. If you're playing a two-player game using the Echoes of the Past cards, the first player to earn seven achievements instead of six wins the game. However, if you find that the seven achievement limit is causing your games to run too long, you can of course decide ahead of time that six achievements wins the game. Enjoy playing Innovation, Echoes of the Past.